Despite the fear that some people have about flying, planes are actually one of the safest ways to travel. You're very unlikely to ever be involved in a plane crash. And that's a good thing. That doesn't change the fact that when things go wrong in the air, it's a terrifying experience for everybody involved. In this video, we're looking at some of the most incredible emergency landing stories of all time. The people on these planes were lucky to escape with their lives. When a Tupolev Tu-154M took off from Udakni in Russia in September 2010, it didn't take long for things to start going wrong. It reached an altitude of 35,000 feet on its way to Moscow, but then experienced a near-total electrical failure, which knocked out the navigation systems and deactivated the fuel pumps. That left the plane flying blind, with only 30 minutes of usable fuel. The radio was also down, and so the pilot couldn't even communicate the problem to the ground. The plane's only hope was Izma Airport, which was closed and had a runway half the size that a plane of this size would need to land safely. With no other options, the pilot headed for the airport on site alone and tried to bring the plane down safely. It took three attempts to get the aircraft down, and even then it was a bumpy landing that overshot the runway and plowed through trees into mud and bushes. None of the 81 people on board were even injured, which is a testament to the pilot's skill. U.S. Airways Flight 1549 made headlines all over the world when it landed on the Hudson River in 2009. The eventful flight and unplanned landing have been called the Miracle on the Hudson. And there were even rumors that a movie about the story would be made shortly after the incident happened. A flock of Canadian geese caused the problem when they collided with the Airbus A320 in flight, knocking out the plane's power and causing a rapid drop in altitude above New York City. The lives of all 155 people on board were in grave danger. Pilot Chelsea Sullenberger knew that he had no chance of getting his stricken plane to an airport, and so splashing down on the Hudson was the least worst of the options available to him. His history as a U.S. Air Force fighter pilot had taught him how to land on water if required. Had a lesser pilot been at the controls of the plane on that fateful day, it's almost certain that there would never have been a miracle the story would have ended in tragedy. <music> Mathematics and measuring systems matter when you're fueling an aircraft, and nobody knows that better than the passengers and crew who were on board Air Canada Flight 143 in 1983, which came down on a narrow airstrip in Gimli. The Boeing 767 was the first ever plane in Canada to run on the metric system. Unfortunately, not everyone on the ground had been informed of this fact. They fueled it using the old system of 1.77 pounds of weight for every liter of fuel, as opposed to the 0.8 kilograms of weight per liter required for the new plane. That resulted in the plane taking off with less than half the fuel it would have needed to make it to its destination in Edmonton. In an incredible stroke of luck, Captain Robert Pearson knew how to fly gliders as well as planes, and so he knew how to handle an aircraft with no fuel. His co-pilot had served in the Royal Canadian Air Force, and so he was aware of the existence of the Gimli airstrips. Using their knowledge and skills together, they guided the powerless plane down for a crash landing, scraping the nose along the tarmac. A plane doesn't have to be in the air to turn into a death trap. British Airways Flight 2276 was still on the runway in Las Vegas when it burst into flames. And just to complicate matters, it was moving at around 100 miles per hour in preparation for takeoff when the fire started. The Boeing 777-200 plane suffered an issue with its main fuel supply line as it prepared for takeoff, releasing fuel into the body of the aircraft and starting a blaze. Pilot Chris Hankey saw the problem immediately and didn't panic, slamming the brakes on and immediately radioing for assistance. Realizing that help wouldn't arrive in time, he initiated an emergency evacuation of his plane and saved the lives of all 157 people on board in the process. Had he followed the textbook procedure, they'd likely all have died. Understandably, Chris decided to retire from flying after the incident. 
He was approaching retirement age anyway, and thought that the accident was a sign that he should walk away earlier than planned. TACA Flight 110 had almost reached its destination in New Orleans when disaster struck in May 1988. The Boeing 737-300 had flown all the way from Belize without incident, but as pilot Carlos Dardano began to descend in preparation for landing, he ran into terrible weather and heavy turbulence, far worse than what the instruments in his cockpit had prepared him for. Both engines on the plane flamed out, leaving the captain without thrust or electrical power. All he could do was attempt a dead stick landing, which involves bringing the plane down on a flat surface without any power whatsoever. It would have been challenging for even the most experienced pilot, but Dardano was only 29 years old, and to make things even harder, he'd lost sight in one eye after being caught in crossfire in his native El Salvador. Miraculously, Dardano pulled it off against all the odds, landing his plane on a grass levee near a NASA premises east of New Orleans. Only one of the 45 people on board was injured. Being aboard a plane that's in trouble is just about the most stressful situation we can imagine. The passengers on board JetBlue Flight 292 were probably worried enough before the television screens in the plane were tuned into news reports covering their seemingly hopeless situation. But for some reason, that's what happened. The plane, an Airbus A320, couldn't land safely because the front wheels had locked in a sideways position. It was therefore impossible to land without setting off sparks when the plane touched the runway. And that was a huge risk with so much fuel on board. The plane spent three hours circling in the air to burn off fuel in an attempt to reduce the risk as far as possible, and then made its final descent. One wrong move could have resulted in an immediate inferno. Pilot Scott Burke brought the rear wheels down first and then gently lowered the nose to the ground. There was smoke, and there were even a few brief flames. But ultimately, the plane came to a halt without anyone being harmed. Looking at pictures of Scandinavian Airlines Flight 751 in the aftermath of its crash landing, it seems impossible to believe that nobody died when the McDonnell Douglas MD-81 plane came out of the sky in December 1991. Somehow only two of the 91 passengers suffered serious injuries, and so this flight came to be known as the Christmas Miracle. The trouble with the plane began when ice which had collected below the wings broke off and entered the engines disabling both of them shortly after takeoff from Stockholm. Quick-thinking pilot Stefan Rasmussen shoved the controls into a nosedive before leveling them up again in order to give himself the longest possible glide before hitting the ground. That ground was, unfortunately, a forest. The plane smashed into several trees on the way down, breaking off the right wing. The tail hit the earth before anything else and shattered into three pieces. The landing gear was deployed, but was sheared off on impact. Had Rasmussen not managed to get the plane into a suitable gliding position, it would likely have hit the ground nose first and exploded. He was hailed as a hero, but chose never to fly a plane again. Mechanical errors will account for most of the things that can and do go wrong with aircraft. But we should always remember that pilots are human, and humans can make mistakes. The near-fatal crash of Japan Airlines Flight 2, a Douglas DC-8 that came down in November 1968, was all down to pilot error. The plane was approaching San Francisco Airport on a routine flight, but simply came down half a mile short of the runway and landed in 10 feet of water in San Francisco Bay instead. Weather was terrible on that November day, with visibility reduced to 300 feet. Instruments aboard the plane should have helped the pilot to his location, but there was a problem. The pilot had never made an instrument landing on this type of plane before. Fate and fortune were on his side. When the plane came to a halt, all of its exits were above the waterline, and the aircraft stayed afloat. That allowed all 107 people on board to evacuate safely with no real harm done. The pilot, who was never publicly named, accepted full responsibility for the incident. The pilot and crew aboard Singapore Airlines Flight SQ-368 
already knew something was wrong about their Boeing 777-300 when it encountered disaster in June 2016. But they thought the situation was under control. An engine oil warning message had come on in the cockpit two hours after takeoff, and so the crew shut off the right engine, descended to 15,000 feet, and turned the plane around to come back home. It would be an inconvenience to passengers, but nothing more. Unbeknown to them, a crack in the fuel oil heat exchanger of the engine had allowed fuel to leak extensively within the engine, including through the core and all over the fan duct. When the pilot deployed the thrust reverser as he brought the plane back in to land in Singapore, the heat ignited the fuel and the plane was engulfed in a fireball. Emergency crews at the airport arrived on the scene quickly, but the 222 passengers on board were trapped inside with flames licking at their windows for a full five minutes before the fire was finally put out. The footage looks spectacular, but nobody was hurt. Pan Am Flight 6 is legendary among aviation enthusiasts. It was the first ocean landing history that didn't kill at least one of the passengers on board. All 31 people on board the Boeing 377 Strato Cruiser survived when it came down in the Pacific Ocean in October 1956. The plane, with pilot Richard Ogg at the helm, was attempting a nighttime flight from Honolulu to San Francisco. Four engines should have been enough to get there safely, but two of them failed, and then the engine propeller malfunctioned. The plane was descending toward the ocean, and there was very little that Richard could do to stop it. Remembering that a previous attempt to ditch a Boeing 377 in water had resulted in the tail shearing off, he ordered all passengers to move to the front of the plane, and circled the plane until morning, getting closer to the water each time. In the meantime, he'd radioed for a rescue boat to be sent to meet them. When morning came and the seas were calm, he made his deliberate descent into the water. He was proven right about his fears. The tail broke off, and the plane nearly sank, but it didn't. Og's memory had saved everybody's lives. British Airways Flight 38 is another flight that achieved a world first. Although in this case, it wasn't a good one. It was the first Boeing 777-200ER ever to be written off and the first to ever lose its hull. Neither of those things are pleasant, but it could all have been a whole lot worse. The plane was coming in to land in London after a long flight from Beijing in January 2008, but crystals of ice had formed in the fuel and blocked the fuel oil heat exchanger. That led to the right engine failing to respond to throttle commands, and the plane hammering into the ground 1,000 feet short of the runway and then skidding over 1,000 feet across the ground. The landing gear was torn off, and one passenger was seriously injured, but nobody was killed. A further 47 of the 136 passengers and crew on board reported minor injuries as a result of their high-velocity landing. The European Aviation Safety Agency went on to order engine modifications from Rolls-Royce, who made the engine, and the problem has thankfully never happened again. Eric Moody, the captain of British Airways Flight 9, performed a great feat of aviation when he brought his Boeing 747-236B in safely to land in Jakarta, and in the process, he made one of the most famous cabin announcements in the history of passenger flight. His plane had hit a cloud of volcanic ash that had been thrown into the air by the erupting Mount Galungan, and the ash had disabled all four of the plane's engines. The situation was grim, but Moody's announcement to his passengers was calm. Pressing the intercom, he told them simply, Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We have a small problem. All four engines have stopped. We are doing our damnedest to get them going again. I trust you are not in too much distress. Moody, whose vision was reduced to almost zero by a St. Elmo's fire effect, managed to glide the plane for miles until they'd cleared the cloud, and then get one engine restarted. That was just enough to get them to Jakarta. It wasn't quite the landing in New Zealand that the plane was aiming for, but it was safety. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!